Hi, I'm Perry, and I want to share with you what to do when you get a Reach It pole. You're going to get a box with either a Mini or a Pro, and you're going to get a box like this, which is your water-fed kit. But firstly, I'd like to say thank you for choosing Reach It. Okay, so let's have a look and see what's inside. I'm gonna lay it all out for you. So this is what you should receive in your box. A Reach It sticker, which you can put on any surface. It's actually transparent there. A QR code to get you back to this video if you ever need it. Here are the two parts to the Kiwi brush developed by Eric Gilliand, which is your pole cleaning brush. Then this is your safety products, is the power and control handles, which are the ergonomic handles, we'll show you those, and the Reach It prisms, which are like belay glass glasses, which are safety glasses to save your neck from straining when you're cleaning really high. Here is an apex in case you want to fit a non-Reach It brush to your Reach It pole, and here is the side to side, which is the amazing swivel system that fits to the constructor brush. Here you can see is a 12 inch constructor brush because this is a mini pack, but if that was a pro pack, you would see it like this. It would be a 16 inch constructor brush, constructor original. Here is your toolkit and all the spare parts that you need to be able to put everything together and to repair anything that might go wrong. And here is your connectivity to water. So it's your way of getting from the spigot to the brush. When you go to open the Mini, you'll notice that on the front of it is the serial number. There are three references to this serial number. One on the box, one on the card inside, which we'll see, and one on the pole. So you can't make any mistakes. So let's get this pole out of here. Okay, so there's some foam in there to protect your reach at the pole. And then you'll pull it out of the box. And here on the side, you'll see the reach it with a barcode through to this video again. And on the back of it is the if you care, we care referencing for your warranty and your insurance. And there goes the serial number again. So make sure you keep these on the side. Then we can take the pole skin cover off and you can see the pole. And we got to take the protection off which basically looks after your pole in transit. So you'll see this band here is to protect the zipper because we've had some problems with the zippers in freight. If you do have a broken zipper, make sure you go to our warranty section and we'll just replace it for free. But um, we sometimes have some problem with that piece there. So now let's put all this together and get you cleaning windows. The first thing we're gonna do is assemble the constructor brush. So you wanna take the constructor brush out of the box and we want to get the side to side and then I'm just going to get another set of hands to show you how to fit this. So the first thing we're going to do is close the bayonet lock and just make the side to side stable so that we can fit it easily to the constructor. Mm -hmm. well, these two parts. Yep. We have the lever pack. We add this, we take one, pull it over, fit it through. Doesn't matter which side, Bob? It doesn't matter, it's to your own preferences. Okay, left hand, right, right hand is fine, yeah. but make sure you put a washer on each side. And then finally... Line that up with the hole, screw that in, adjust that yeah. up. So, take a bit more. And Good to go. Beautiful. Okay, next. The grab the constructor pouch. Because this has got the bolts that fit the side to side to constructor. Yeah. And there's a little pack here which fits the gardener and the younger if you wanted to put side to side on them. All right, and here we have two bolts, two nuts, two washers, and two spring washers. Then Great. we need the toolkit, and we have a small. There it is. Wrench spanner yep um, we need to come from this side and fit the t-bolt in here it's a little bit fiddly but with the right one. this is the part everybody's gonna hate right mm -hmm. it's putting the little bolts in yeah so we push it down with one finger once it's in 
Push it down, come from the other side. Oh, how do we make sure we're putting it the right way up? There's a flange in there, isn't there? So you want the jets there. Mm -hmm. Have you got it? Yep. And then there's a, there's a flange, there's a bevel that side, and there's no bevel on this side. So the bevel goes towards the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah? All right, then we take the first washer and put a nut on, and we just finger two turns. So it's tight. Then we bring in the other bolt. It helps to like stretch the bristles back for that moment. They are these two centimeter ones are really strong. Again, we push one finger down, and then on the other side we have sticking out. Fit the washer, and now that this is also a little bit tight. We relax, fit the finger again. We got more stability now. We make sure the washer is all the way in the side to side. Fit the spring washer and fit the nut. Alright, so now we can easier open the other side and do the same at the spring washer. And then just use the spanner and tighten it. Yeah, so you want to, because it's a moving part, it's going to take a lot of vibration and everything. You want to do these up evenly, but do them up tight, yeah? Mm. Okay, make sure they're tight because they will come undone if you don't do them up tight. All right. Sweet. Tight. Great, thank you. So just if you come across this and you find that this white um, T-fitting here is out of place because we're going to need to put the tube over that, you can find one of the drill bits that's included and you can just nudge it straight like that. So to connect the water to the constructor brush there are two ways to go. The, the connector for the main rinse bar and the cannons is at the back here with a push fit fitting there. Now if you only want to use the rinse bar, you can take the straight T-piece and put it there and we'll connect the Rhino tube there. And the other way is that you want to use the rinse bar and you want to use the center jets. The center jets, if you follow them along, you'll see that there's two jets on the outside edge, which means that you've got edge to edge water um, if you use the center jets and the rinse bar. So to do that, you'll take this piece here, push this onto here and the T piece onto there. And that's the proper setup for using both the rinse bar and the center jets. Okay, so the way to use any of the push fits is to recognize that there's a little shoulder with a clicking action there. You hold that in and the tube will come out really easily. If you push it in and you pull, it will never come out. It's got little stainless steel teeth inside. So you need to hold that there. I'll give you the sound. That's onto the microphone, so you can see that. So to adjust, never pull it with force without pushing the shoulder in. Okay, so let's now put the constructor brush onto the Reach It Mini. The way we're going to do that is to open the top clamp, pull out the Rhino tip, which will give you the ability to put anybody else's brush or angle adapters onto the Reach It Mini. And then we just take, you'll see the, the notch and we put that into the gap in the clamp and pull it tight. And now we have the Reach It Mini with a constructor brush on it. Now that angle is a little bit unusual, so we just open the lever and close it off and we can change the angle of the brushes in relation to the glass to the pole. So that's ready to rock and roll. Now in the pack you're going to get 60 feet or 20 meters of Rhino tube so what I've got, I've, I've taken a little piece here so you can see what we're going to do. We're going to join the Rhino tube to the constructor brush. So now we have the ability for the water supply. We're going to bend this up a little bit and we're just going to clip it into what is the tube runner. You can give it a little bit of a twist on the way in there and that will give you the movement. These get a little bit more open with a little bit more use. They're a really cool little clip. Okay, so now you have Rhino tube in the tube runner and then make sure there's just a little bit of slack at the top because 
The next thing we're going to do, actually, I nearly forgot, is we're going to open the bayonet. So the way to open the bayonet is push it towards the brush first. That'll release it a little bit, yeah? So you'll see it's a bit tight in the beginning. We push it towards the brush, twist it backwards, open it up, and then you'll feel that there's another bayonet locking there. So you can actually stop it from sliding back down. And now the constructor brush is ready to go. This tube is not getting in the way of that movement. You don't want that too tight. So the constructor brush is free. And um, then at the other end of your tube, you want to be able to get back to your garden hose or the, your filter. And so you'll find this fitting here. This is called a gardena fitting. And this is another push fit to suit the rhino tube. So you're going to push the other end of your rhino tube into there. And then if you imagine this is your supply hose or your garden hose, then you could click it into there like that. Now, not too long in the distant future, you're going to find yellow rhino hose. It's a flat hose and it'll have a fitting on the end of it like that the same way. And so if you choose to use rhino hose, just wants to lay flat, it's really incredible hose as your supply hose, then you'll just click that on and then you've got rhino tube meeting rhino hose going back to your filter. So now you're actually ready to go and clean windows. But I want to show you what else is in the pack and what it's used for. So the first thing is you'll find uh, this fitting here, which has actually got a US garden thread. So if you're in the US, you'll find this fitting. Otherwise, it'll be an orange fitting. And it's got a ball valve in there, which gives you the ability to control the flow where the rhino tube joins the tap. And uh, you can just click that into there if you want to and then fit it to another fitting like a garden hose thread. Okay. Now, this one here, we call this the apex. The reason we give you an apex is because sometimes there's another brush that you like and that's the one you want to use. So you can open this up, lock it off like that. By the way, with this, the apex, it's easier to open and close it in this position and then slide it around there so that it looks nice. Now, to fit the apex instead of the constructor brush, let me just get some tube here so I can demonstrate it. Open the top clamp, take out the constructor brush, put in the apex and connect your other brush. Okay, now I want to show you how Tube Runner works. It's pretty simple. It'll keep sliding through the, as you go to extend your pole, it'll keep pulling through the other tube runners. And that's good when you go to extend the pole. Now let me just push this last section up. There we are. Now what happens when you go to disassemble a pole, you don't want this turning into loops. Yeah, like that. That's what we don't want. So it's as easy as that. As you go to dismantle the pole, you just pull the tube out of each section as it comes down, yeah? And that way, you've got the tube exactly where you want it in relation to yourself. So I want that off because I'm going to show you now power and control. The power and control ergonomic handles. These we developed with Dr. Douglas J. Mills, MD, from Fort Hood, Texas. And they were actually built by our very own Bob Froman from Germany. He's in the background. Okay, so the first question is, why do we give you power and control? Well, it's because water-fed poles are potentially injurious. Not a catastrophic injury, except if you hit a power line, but a repetitive motion injury. And the industry till now has kind of gone into denial about that. But we thought, no, we're, we have to be a responsible manufacturer we have to come up with solutions and then we need to give you those solutions. We can't be like Philip Morris saying that smoking is good for asthma and then, you know, plenty of people are going to get injured and hurt down sometime in the future. So let me show you what happens. This in scientific terms or occupational health and safety terms is called a bimanual linear overhead tool. And the reason is because the way we use it is with both hands, it's a straight line and we use it over our heads. So it's going to do this. Now watch. What happens to my wrist down here is that this area here is called Decker veins. When that plays up, it's called Decker veins syndrome. And you look at the action that we're doing all day long is working that wrist in that way. And up in the top, we're going to put our hand over the top of the pole. And when we put any pressure or control, we tend to use what's called the rotator cuff 
sitting up in here. So there's a, the risk of a rotator cuff injury from a water fed pole. So the way to deal with that, the best we know so far, is to fit for the, for the wrist is called the power handle because the power arm is what pushes the pole up and down. We open the clamp, we slide it on, and we lock it down, and it's in line. Let me just bring this around for the camera. It's in line with the clamps and the brush in a straight place. So we just want to twist that. Brush is square, handle is square. Now, you have a look now at my wrist. My wrist doesn't move at all. All of that action is happening in the pivot. So the risk to the decavane area is reduced. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Now, to get the control handle on, we actually have to undo the pole skin. So we take the pole skin off, and we also take the power handle off. I'm actually left-handed, so I would fit the control handle this way, but because most of you are right-handed, you will want to fit it that way. So you'll put it on there, slide it on. It's a little bit fiddly to get it on. You've got to open the clamp a lot. And remember that lever needs to be wide open in order for the clamp to be wide open itself. And then you can slide it on over that sticker and you can adjust it to where you want it to be this way. Because you might be short and you'll want it down here or tall and you'll want it up there. And then we put the power handle back on this is the orientation of it. So we just clip it onto the end, do that up tight, let it spin around. And now I've got to be right handed. Before, if you wanted to put pressure, downward pressure, which pushes Z force to push the bristles display on the glass to increase the agitation, you would press down like this. And this is pressing down with a rotator cuff. And what we discovered is that if you could hold the handle like this, and press down like this, then you're going to use the tricep muscle, which is a power muscle. You can't injure that with any amount of repetitive motion, pretty much, you know, without being ridiculous. So now your action can be like this. Yeah? And you can even have a straight arm, depending on how far you've got this out. On the Reach It Pro, it's easier to get this further out. So you can get a straight action like that. Now you may also want this handle off to the side. A lot of guys like this, and I'll tell you why. It's not natural. You never see a boxer box like this, but a boxer box is like this. This is a natural pose, yeah? So the arms and the hands are naturally and comfortably slightly separated. So what you'll find is that instead of working like this, where you're bringing yourself into alignment, just by getting slightly off center, you get an amazing amount more comfort in using the pole. Now it's kind of weird with it being short, but when you've got it up against a building and you start working with that, it's amazing. And remember that your adjustments are all of these angles here and the length and placement on the pole. So that's our solution to the risk of repetitive motion for you, our customers. Now there's a couple of points about introducing free safety devices in an area which has never been tackled before. The first thing is that if you already have an injury, then using a water-fed pole might be aggravating that injury. So you don't have to be injured from using the water-fed pole. Secondly, what we learned from Dr. Mills is that when you're adjusting everything, you can actually open this bolt here and make that spin around as well. And you can do it like this if you want to, the same way. But whatever feels comfortable for you is likely to be less injurious than something that feels uncomfortable. So make sure that you don't adapt or adopt a set of behaviors using these tools that makes you feel uncomfortable, yeah? And the third thing is that if you do have an injury, this is not a, a solution saying that we can help you with your injury. You should go to your physiotherapist or your doctor or your occupational health and safety people and you should consult to them about your posture, your technique, the tool, the job, whatever it is, and make sure that somebody who's professional is giving you professional advice so that 
your retirement isn't full of pain. That's all I'm concerned about. I think that it's irresponsible to sell a product that's potentially going to give you um, a great time, make lots of money when you're young, and then destroy your mature years when you want, want to go and enjoy you know, the fruits of your labor, and all of a sudden you're riddled with pain and having operations and replacing parts of your body and stuff like that. So you know, this is our answer so far. And the reason we're including it for free is because we want the feedback from you. So if you are somebody that likes to interact with a manufacturer, please feel free to go to powerandcontrol.com and give us feedback or give me a call, jump on our live chat or whatever. Tell us what you like, tell us what you don't like. If you've got an idea, give it to us because everybody's gonna benefit, okay? And they're free, so we're not making money out of your disadvantage. So you can give us ideas for free and help everybody else for free, yeah? So while we're on the topic of safety, let's talk about the pole skin. So now I have to put it back on. Firstly, put it on that the zipper is on the back, not on the clamp side. And then you're basically gonna line it up on a table pull and push this through, which is not easy, into the double fitting, and then you can pull the zipper. Well, that went well, didn't it? Oh, oh, what's this? Let's have a look at this. Here is a sticker that you need to point out. You have a responsibility to yourself and your employees to realize that carbon fiber conducts electricity. So please, please be aware and read this label and know that if you come near the source of an electricity, this is potentially deadly. However, we had a guy called Eric Sorensen in Denmark who touched 400 volts with his Reach It Mini, exactly the same as this, and a pole skin, and he didn't even feel the explosion. It exploded and melted and all sorts of things. And the reason is because the pole skin does not conduct electricity unless, of course, it's wet, right? Because water conducts electricity. So as long as you've got a pole skin on, you have some protection against being electrocuted. Now here's the next physiological problem of using a bimanual overhead linear tool, is this, you're cleaning, and you could be cleaning anywhere up to six and seven stories, and you spend all your time here, and you're using your traps, and you know, if you ever get tension headaches and things like that, it's all happening in here because you're looking up here like that. And it's that problem that we also wanted to provide you with a solution free with your Reach It. And these are called Reach It Prisms. They're developed for the rock climbing industry, so they're called belay glasses. So let me show you them. And inside you get the prisms with a little leather strap. So I'll be you, put this over your head so that if you need to throw them off your head, they're gonna get caught. And then they work like this. Now if I turn down like this, you should be able to see my eyes. Yeah? How's that? Now I've actually got peripheral vision. I can see up, down, I can see my feet. So I'm much safer than some of the other belay glasses which wrap around. And so now I can actually work like this and I can see all the way, like if I'm here, I can see uh, the brush still there. So try them on. They say that they take two or three days to get used to, and once you're used to them, then you're gonna be able to protect your neck um, for a lot longer. And then, just so you know, there's a little clip there so you can carry the, the pouch you know, on your belt hook or whatever. So if you're using them or not using them, then you know where they are. Cool, those are Reach It Prisms. Free with every reach at pole. <laughs> okay, so the last section, what we care about, like if you care, we care, is pole maintenance. Now the best form of water-fed pole maintenance is to use your tube externally. Because if you have an internal tube, this tube's gonna run along the ground, get pulled up and down, up and down inside your pole, and it's gonna bring dirt and grit inside your pole and compromise the relationship between the clamp and the carbon fiber. So you're gonna end up with massive wear and tear of the carbon fiber, and then you're gonna replace your pole way, way, way more prematurely than the five to 10 year life that you should get out of a reach it. So step one is external tube management with tube runner. So the way the Kiwi brush works is the same way as a water fed brush works, agitation and rinse. So you've got 
bristles here and a rinse bar here and then all you do is you're going to push that up inside the pole with the rhino tube and the water is going to be spraying out and then pull it back through. We've got a video online for you to be able to see that in action. The reason we have these little clips is that they go in here is that when you pull them through and you hit an end defender, right, sometimes this can come adrift. So these clips are designed to stop the shoulders from pulling back. So you put one there and one there. Okay, so there's clips on the rhino tube side of each of the clamps so that those shoulders can't be pushed up when they hit an end defender when you're coming in and out of the tube section. That's cool. The reason we do pole maintenance is to reduce the effect of wear and tear so that your tool lasts longer. And I just want to make this point. Every time there are two parts moving together, there has to be one part that's sacrificial. So we make the rhino clamps out of plastic. If you see clamps in the market made out of aluminium which or aluminum, which one is going to be sacrificial? It's going to be the carbon fiber. So basically the manufacturer has designed the pole to fail and what we've done is we've designed the clamp to fail. Now it might fail once a year or once every two years depending on how much you use it, but these clamps are $69. This pole is $790. Every year you can buy the latest clamp that we produce and you can bring your pole exactly back to new the same as anybody else buying a new reach it. So you can see that we've thought about that and the way we do it is we actually compromise a little bit on weight and we put 304 stainless steel bolts and nuts instead of glue and we make it so that you can actually take these clamps off and replace them as you need to sometime in the future. So now you know everything about how to put everything together and join it together. We want you to go to the website, use the QR code and go to our warranty section. It's uh, futureofcleaning.com forward slash i-care.html and register your poll. When you register, you have to watch 10 videos and basically answer a small test with yes, no answers. Should I leave the poll leaning against a building fully extended on a windy day? The answer I can give to you is no. If you answer no and the other nine questions are the same, we're going to extend the manufacturer's carbon fiber warranty by another two years to three years. And we're going to give you free insurance for the first two years of owning a Reach It Mini or a Reach It Pro. And what that means is that if at any time you drop this pole and a section breaks, we will replace it for free. And we have that happen maybe 10 times a year. Some dumbass does something dumb and we replace it for free. Even we've had cars drive over our poles and we've replaced two sections, one for each wheel. Yeah, so there's some crazy stuff happens out there, but it's real. So, if you care about your reach it pole and you treat it like an industrial tool that it is and beautifully manufactured, then we care and we're gonna back you and we kind of use the power of the reach it community, everybody chipping in together. Now, none of this would be possible. We're just turning five years old. If it weren't for people like you believing in us, um, suffering our weaknesses, remembering that sometimes things are not perfect with us, but we always replace them free. We're on your side, you're on our side. So there's nothing that we could say more directly and yet so simply as to say thank you for choosing Reach It. And we've got lots more coming for you.